All right, hello everyone. Uh, we're here at the LSU Ag Center Northeast Research Station just out of St. Joseph, Louisiana. Uh, and we are in our nematicide uh, field trial here for sweet potato. Uh, so at this research station, this is where we do the bulk of our nematode management work. So whether it's sweet potatoes, cotton, soybean, or corn, it's usually happening here. So what we have going on here is trying to optimize nematicide application methods. So we've been doing some trials over the past three years trying to evaluate various nematicide chemistries. And we've had some pretty good results with a few different uh, products. So vellum is one of the products that's shown pretty good efficacy, same with magistine. And uh, really what we want to do here though is try to optimize the efficacy. How can we make sure we get consistently good suppression of the nematodes using these products? So our idea here is to evaluate three different management tactics using both chemistries, whether it's vellum, our, our synthetic nematicide, or our biological nematicide, magistine. And we're coming out and we're either doing a broadcast application of the nematicide, we're doing an infra application of the nematicide, or something new, which is what we're calling the transplant drench application of the nematicide. And each one of these approaches is gonna have uh, you know, a different benefit. First is broadcast spray. That's spraying your whole field. Uh, and essentially what you're gonna get is a low to moderate concentration of the nematicide, kind of within the first couple inches of your soil. Uh, but really, your roots are going to be in your uh, planting bed. So that's where in furrow applications come in. It involves creating the planting bed, opening it up, spraying your compound right where you're going to be putting your sweet potato slips, closing up that bed, and then planting. So you're going to get a higher concentration of the compound right where your sweet potato slips are. The third one is the transplant drench. And this is something that has been utilized in some other growing regions. And the theory behind it is pretty interesting. It's essentially putting four ounces of water along with the nematicide directly at the slip where we planted it. So every time there's going to be a plant, we're going to put in four ounces of water. What that's going to create is a higher concentration of nematicide completely around where the roots are developing. So the whole idea with this project is we should be able to get better nematode uh, control with the transplant drench application simply by applying more higher concentrations of the compound where the roots are growing. But that's ultimately what we're trying to evaluate this year. So we're monitoring nematode population development in this field. We sample it at the time of planting. We came out here just a couple of weeks ago to do some mid-season sampling. And then we'll come out here at harvest and see what our final nematode populations are. And then the final thing that we're looking at in this field is yield. We're going to take a look at how these nematicide products have influenced what we're actually going to yield out of here. So how many US number one, how many canner, and how many jumbo sweet potatoes are we able to get? And is there actually a benefit of applying the nematicides to sweet potato fields? So we, uh, we hope to give you an update on this at our next meeting, and I believe that will be scheduled for this winter. Okay, so in addition to our Renifor nematode and our Southern Root Knot nematode that we have here in Louisiana and a lot of our different sweet potato fields, we're also keeping a real close eye on that Guava Root Knot nematode. Uh, so we did a survey a couple years back trying to see if this nematode had established. So this is an invasive pest that seems to be coming down from North Carolina. And uh, we actually didn't find the pest in any of our production fields, but we're still keeping a real close eye on that. Uh, and in terms of management, we're actually working on developing sweet potato varieties that have resistance not only to guava root knot nematode, but also really good and durable resistance to southern root knot nematode as well. So in the future, I think we're going to have some pretty good management tactics for a lot of our different nematode pests here in the United States. We're here just south of Delhi, Louisiana at Black Gold Farms, and we are currently standing in our demonstration field for the field day this year. Uh, so in this trial, what we're doing is we're trying to take a look at different nematicides, not just the application methods, but in this case, we're actually comparing to a fumigant. So the first treatment that I want to talk about is our sole fumigant. That is kind of like our gold standard in pest, nematode, and weed control. So there's a lot of benefits to fumigating, but there's also quite a bit of drawbacks. Very toxic, pretty bad for the environment, and very expensive these days. So really, as an industry, we're, we're trying to move away from the soil fumigants and try non-fumigant nematicides that can give us similar levels of control of nematodes. Uh, so what we have in the, the field behind me is uh, three different nematicides. So we have Nimitz, we have Vellum, and we have Vidate. These are synthetic chemicals that have shown pretty good efficacy in previous years. This field is infested with reniform nematode. It's one of our very common and widespread pests, and it does cause quite a bit of yield loss on sweet potato. 
So in this trial, what we've done is we've applied the nematocytes in furrow as small plots. So they're about 35 feet long by two rows wide. And what we're doing is we're going to monitor nematode population development throughout the season. And we've been doing that so far this season and have some preliminary data to share. And we'll also take a look at yield. All these compounds were applied in furrow. That's the current method that we're uh, recommending for a lot of our growers. And uh, what we're going to be doing on our field days, we're going to be pulling up some of the rows here. We'll take a look at yield. And essentially at the end of this, we're going to be able to look at the level of nematode suppression you get with these products. And we'll also be able to tell you the yield benefit that you're going to get by using them. So far, what have we seen in this field? Well, the soil fumigant that's over on this right hand side here, it worked pretty good. We saw 90% suppression of renophore nematode populations relative to untreated soil at the time of planting. So essentially we were putting the plant material into pretty clean soil that didn't have a whole lot of nematodes. The nematicides, we applied them at the time of planting. So we opened up the beds and sprayed them in furrow. So the at plant nematode populations were pretty high, but by mid season, we're seeing about a 30% suppression with our non-fumigant nematicides. By mid season with our soil fumigant, we're actually seeing very rapid reinfestation of the fumigated soil which really isn't that surprising. We've seen that in other production systems as well. But what that suggests is that soil fumigants are only gonna provide you with short-term nematode suppression, pretty much just at the time of planting, and then the soil will be reinfested relatively quickly. These non-fumigant nematicides, they have longer half-lives, quite a bit longer. They stick around in the soil, and they might be able to give us more prolonged nematode suppression throughout the season. All right, so one of the symptoms that we see with Renifor nematode on sweet potato is cracking. It predisposes some of these varieties to cracking. Uh, I'm not seeing it here on these particular sweet potatoes, but that is something that we evaluate in these trials. It's percent cracking and how these different nematicides can impact that. These ones are looking pretty good and we'll uh, let the field continue to grow. So we are interested in taking a look at the yield benefit of nematicide application and the level of nematode suppression that we can get here at LSU Egg Center. Uh, I want to take the time to thank the support that we've had through the Louisiana Sweet Potato Commission. Without their funding, we wouldn't be able to set up the trials that we have here today.